Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are checking out GPU performance in Battlefield 5, the official release version of the game. Because if you recall back in early September, we did give the beta version of the game a whirl and found some pretty solid performance from both AMD and Nvidia. The only problem was back then we could only benchmark using the multiplayer portion of the game and that does make gathering accurate and reliable data quite difficult. For testing a single hardware configuration, the multiplayer portion of the game is actually quite useful as it's very taxing and it will give you a good idea of how a certain setup will handle the game. But directly comparing that data with the second system is very difficult and extremely time consuming to do accurately. The margin of error also becomes very large. Therefore, comparing half a dozen or more hardware configurations isn't really a viable option using the multiplayer portion of the game. Therefore, for this test, I'm using the single player campaign. And since we're looking at GPU performance for now, uh, this shouldn't really be an issue. What it has allowed me to do is benchmark 38 new and previous generation GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia. I've selected Operation Dragoon for this benchmark session and the test starts at the checkpoint where the objective is to destroy the anti-air positions and the test runs for 60 seconds. I begin by taking a few shots with a sniper rifle and then moving left and taking a path up the left side of the base. And from there, I take a few more shots and then continue to move along uh, the edge of the base. The results shown here have been taken from an average of three runs. Testing takes place at 1080p, 1440p and 4K using the ultra quality preset with DirectX 11. We found earlier during the game's beta phase that DX12 causes frame time issues, leading to very noticeable stuttering. And unfortunately, this appears to still be the case. So that's terrible news for anyone wanting to take advantage of the yet to be included ray tracing technology. For this benchmark, I'll be using my updated GPU test rig, which is built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X and comprises of a Core i9 9900K clocked at five gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3400 memory. For the GeForce GPUs, driver version 4.16.81 was used and for AMD, the Radeon Adrenaline 18.11.1 driver. Okay, so I think that's about everything. Let's get into the results. Starting with the previous generation GPUs, we find for an average of 60 FPS at 1080p, you'll need either a Radeon R9 390 or GeForce GTX 970 graphics card. If you want to keep frame rates above 60 FPS at all times, the R9 390X or GTX 980 will be required. And interestingly, we are seeing a very even performance between the older AMD and Nvidia GPUs in Battlefield 5. In fact, I have to say the Maxwell optimization seem a bit better than what we've been seeing uh, in other recently released games. So that's great to see. Jumping up to 1440p and we find a very console-ish 30 FPS for the GTX 960 and R9 380. The R9 390 and GTX 970 are about as slow as I'd consider going here and even then I'd probably drop the quality preset down to high at 1440p. For a much smoother experience you will require a Fury or GTX 980 Ti GPU. Oddly our nano graphics card which shouldn't be that much slower than the Fury was performing quite strangely in Battlefield 5 and came in much slower than expected. So I'll have to double check these results as soon as I can, but for now, unfortunately, I am locked out of Battlefield 5 on every Origin account I have access to due to excessive hardware changes. So cheers for that, EA. Moving on, we have the 4K results. And unsurprisingly, the flagship GPUs from 2014 and 2015 really aren't cutting it here, at least not with the ultra quality preset enabled. So let's move on to check out some much newer GPUs. Okay, so please note I'm not including the Radeon RX 400 series GPUs, as for the most part, they've just been rebranded to the RX 500 series. So for an average of 60 FPS, you'll want a GTX 1063 gigabyte or RX 570, both did very well at 1080p. That said, with the RX 570 selling for as little as $150 US right now, that would be my go-to uh, budget option for Battlefield 5 right now. Then, for those that want to keep frame rates above 60 FPS at all times, the GeForce GTX 1066GB or Radeon RX 580 will do the trick nicely. Beyond that, we are starting to get into, I suppose, what you could call overkill territory for a lot of gamers. Uh, that said, I'd be targeting something like the GTX 1080 or RTX 2070 or perhaps even Vega 64 for 1080p high refresh rate Battlefield 5 action. Then at 1440p, you're really going to need at least the 6 gigabyte 1060 or an RX 580. And in fact, the Radeon GPU looks to be the preferred option here as it delivered 16% more performance. 
We also see Vega 56 beating the GTX 1070 by a 9% margin, while Vega 64 matched the GTX 1080 and RTX 2070. Still, if you want big frame rates, then you can't go past the RTX 2080 or GTX 1080 Ti. And then of course there is the absolutely insane RTX 2080 Ti. The GTX 1080 Ti and RTX 2080 also do quite well at 4K, but this is really where the RTX 2080 Ti comes into its own, delivering well over 60 FPS at all times, making for a breathtaking 4K gaming experience. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the RTX 2080 Ti is really something else for 4K gaming. Admittedly, it is a stupidly expensive GPU, but it's the only RTX model that makes an ounce of sense in my opinion, given that it can enable an experience that's seen by no other GPU. Then tossing all 38 GPUs together gives us this micro font graph. The RTX 2080 Ti is still a big standout though, even at 1080p. Anyway, if you want to examine this graph uh, in a bit more detail, then feel free to pause the video as I'm just going to skip through these graphs that include all the results. And here we can see the 1440p numbers. And please note, any GPU that couldn't push over 20 FPS was dropped as the results are somewhat useless. Then finally, we have the 4K results. And again, any GPU that couldn't average at least 20 FPS was dropped from the testing for this resolution. Capping off the testing, I've got some quality scaling performance with the GTX 1066 GB and RX 588 GB. Dropping down from ultra to high boost performance of the RX 580 by 22% while we see a slightly larger 25% gain for the GTX 1060. Then from high to medium sees a massive 33% boost for the GTX 1060 and 34% for the RX 580. And at this point there isn't much need to seek out the low quality preset. All right, so normally I also test about a dozen really old GPUs at 1080p using the medium quality preset. And I'll do this to give those of you running older hardware a good idea of what to expect. Unfortunately, I've not been able to include that data this time due to EA's ridiculous hardware limitations. I've talked about this before, but EA has this stupid activation limit that doesn't allow for more than five hardware changes. For a typical gamer, this really isn't an issue, so I guess fair enough. But for those of us testing the game to show you how it performs, it really is a big problem. Basically, after testing five GPUs, the account gets locked out for 24 hours, and sometimes I've found as little as three hardware changes will trigger this lockout. So it means we have to purchase multiple copies of the game, in this case, pay a month's worth of EA Origin Access Premiere on multiple accounts. On that note, I would like to just take a moment to thank the Patreon members who sacrificed their accounts for the good of the benchmarks. Very much appreciated that uh, you guys really are the lifeblood of the channel. I will continue to test more configurations over the coming days and I also want to work out what's going on with my nano graphics card so expect some updates on that and then of course we will transition into quite a bit of CPU testing as I know you guys always want to see some CPU benchmarks. For now, I can conclude that those of you wanting to play Battlefield 5 at 60 FPS in all of its glory, so that is to say using the ultra quality preset, and you want a game at 1080p, then you really need nothing more than a GTX 970, a 3 gigabyte 1060, the R9 390, or even the RX 570. That card is particularly good value right now. And then for those of you wanting to play at 1440p, the Fury, Fury X, I'm not sure what was going on with the Nano there, but the Fury and Fury X definitely worked well, as did the RX 580, the GTX 980 Ti, and the GTX 1060 6GB. That's about what you'll require for yeah, 60 FPS on average. Honestly though, given how great the game looks, I don't feel like that's a very tall order at all. We've seen games that look much worse than Battlefield 5 and re had required things like you know, a GTX 1070 or Vega 56, for example. That said, we are talking about the DirectX 11 performance. The DirectX 12 implementation still appears to be a bit buggy, which is what we saw in the beta. It's actually what we saw with Battlefield 1, and it didn't really get fixed that well as the game went on. There was still some odd stuff there with DirectX 12. So that is a bit concerning for those of you hoping to take advantage of ray tracing in this title whenever ray tracing is supported by this title. And on that note, I am going to end this one. Sorry again that the testing wasn't up to our usual standard. EA hasn't really made it uh, easy for us, unfortunately, with that five hardware limitation business. If anyone watching this video knows anyone at EA that could help us out with removing that from our account, because apparently for 
uh, certain media outlets and testing and that. Some people claim that you can remove it from the account. I haven't actually got proper confirmation about that, but I've tried to contact EA and you haven't got too far yet. But if anyone knows anyone at EA or anyone from EA is watching this video by chance and you can help us out, please contact us because, yeah, it would make doing this testing a hell of a lot easier if we weren't limited to five hardware changes per account. It's a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, hope you still enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the way we do Harrow Mox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.